Calling Misco Electric here. Today is Sunday, January 26th, 2025, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. A few days ago, a new presidential administration took office. Day one executive orders have been signed, some of which could eventually have impact on electric transportation. One order, titled Unleashing American Energy, specifically targets two EV-related policies, and we took a closer look in order to bring you the facts. Firstly, the order effectively pauses distribution of funds for the Inflation Reduction Act's National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, known as NEVI, as well as the Charging and Fueling Infrastructure Discretionary Grant Program, known as CFI. The order requires all agency heads to submit a report to the Director of the National Economic Council and Office of Management and Budget within 90 days, which provides an outline of their processes, policies, and issuance of any contracts. Within 30 days, additional reports are due, which identify recommendations in alignment with the new administration's goals to ensure all regulatory requirements are grounded in clearly applicable law, Ensure that the global effects of a rule, regulation, or action shall, whenever evaluated, be reported separately from its domestic costs and benefits in order to promote sound regulatory decision-making and prioritize the interests of the American people. Guarantee that all executive departments and agencies provide opportunity for public comment and rigorous peer-reviewed scientific analysis and to ensure that no federal funding be employed in a manner contrary to the principles outlined in this section unless required by law. On top of that, the executive order states that agencies shall prioritize cost effectiveness, American workers and businesses, and the sensible use of taxpayer money to the greatest extent when distributing federal funding. They add that the director of OMB shall finalize and circulate guidelines to further implement this specific subsection. All of this to say that funding is halted so that the new directors can see if the program is transparent and not violating any laws. It's important to remember that the funding is distributed to the states, who are the ones making the decisions on who will receive the funding based on each state's own requirements on top of the federal requirements. These reports should be fairly easy to generate due to a high level of transparency regarding these projects already. In episode 41 of The Current, we provided an update on the NEVI program, sharing their newly launched progress tracking website, which provides details on funding distribution from each state and the status of the EV charging projects. Currently, the website shows that Francis Energy has won the most charging hardware bids with 113 awards, which will distribute 354 connectors for a total of $191,000 per connector. Tesla is right behind them, having won 93 bids with a plan to distribute 539 connectors for a total of $58,900 per connector. According to this NEVI dashboard, 39 states have not yet opened any federally funded dispensers to the public. 15 states have not yet been issued any awards. Rhode Island is the only state which has completed and opened all of its NEVI funded stations. You can find a link to the NEVI dashboard in this video's description. Perhaps you've seen sensationalist headlines about this topic. I'm here to assure you that no funding has been eliminated for NEVI or CFI at this time. The executive order also contained a reference to the elimination of an EV mandate. To be clear, there has not ever been a federal EV mandate. The Environmental Protection Agency had previously published a final rule for regulations regarding emissions for light duty and medium duty vehicles starting in 2027. We reported on this as it happened way back in episode three, and I'll link it for those who would like a refresher. EPA regulations are used by automakers to strategically plan out the most cost-effective path to complying to these standards. Their plans might include options such as producing more EVs or allocating funds to purchase carbon credits from EV automakers. This executive order may give Trump's new team the opportunity to modify those EPA standards and will report on those changes if they take place. At the state level, California's Air Resources Board has set emission standards which require all new passenger cars, trucks, and SUVs sold in California to be zero emission vehicles by 2035. That plan had been approved by the EPA. The executive order states, 
It is in the policy of the United States to eliminate the electric vehicle mandate and promote true consumer choice, which is essential for economic growth and innovation, by removing regulatory barriers to motor vehicle access, by ensuring a level regulatory playing field for consumer choice in vehicles, by terminating, where appropriate, state emissions waivers that function to limit sales of gasoline-powered automobiles, and by considering the elimination of unfair subsidies and other ill-conceived government-imposed market distortions that favor EVs over other technologies and effectively mandate their purchase by individuals, private businesses, and government entities alike by rendering other types of vehicles unaffordable. California officials have said the state will defend their emission standards plans in court. If that happens, the legal proceedings are expected to take years. Finally, the executive order also targets the federal EV tax credit, which provides a point-of-sale credit of up to $7,500 to eligible buyers of eligible EVs. Today, only 15 models qualify for the credit. Language in the order, such as where appropriate, indicates a lack of clear intent. At this time, no relaxation or elimination of emission standards has taken place. I hope this provided clarity on what the reality of the situation is and how it affects the EV industry. I will continue to provide the most up-to-date information and the truth of how it impacts EV adoption moving forward. Last week, we reported the launch of the refreshed Tesla Model Y in China and predicted that we would see a US version soon. On Thursday night, the US version of the Tesla Model Y became available to order with first delivery slated for March. At first, the new version will only be available in the Launch Series trim. It contains a long-range battery pack and an all-wheel drive powertrain targeting 320 miles of range. It also includes the acceleration boost for a 0 to 60 mile per hour time of 4.1 seconds. The version includes a new 15-speaker sound system, white seats, and the $8,000 full self-driving package for a price tag of $59,990, excluding taxes and incentives. With all of those features, this price is roughly $4,000 less expensive than a similarly configured first-generation Model Y. Current inventory Model Ys at lower trim levels are now discounted as low as $45,110, excluding taxes and incentives. Cadillac also introduced a new version of their popular SUV, the Lyric. The Lyric V is set to be the quickest Cadillac ever produced. A new Velocity Max mode delivers 615 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque with a 0 to 60 mile per hour time in 3.3 seconds with launch control. Lyric V includes the same 102 kilowatt hour battery pack as other Lyrics with an advertised range of 285 miles. The V will have distinct integrated exterior lighting and lower fascia, available carbon fiber exterior package, a new 22-inch wheel, and a lower suspension. The interior includes V-embroidered seats and a new performance steering wheel with prime access to V mode that saves preferred performance driving settings. There's also a new competitive mode, which offers a suite of traction management features, which Cadillac claims are specifically engineered to increase vehicle agility. Interior dimensions and towing capacity remains the same as non-V models, but they have added a new exterior and interior synthesized sound, which they call E-Rev. Have a listen. With all these new components, the vehicle is heavier than other Lyrics at 5,980 pounds. If it were 20 pounds heavier, it would exceed the 6,000 pound curb weight, which could enable commercial buyers to reap from certain taxation benefits. The 2026 Cadillac Lyric V starts at $79,990 with availability planned for some time this spring. What are your thoughts on the new spicy Lyric? Autonomous electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles are inching closer to reality. This week, Chinese aircraft manufacturer Ehang completed a demonstration flight of its autonomous air taxi in Shanghai. Their aircraft has become the world's first pilotless passenger-carrying EVTOL to receive 
a type certificate, production certificate, and standard airworthiness certificate from the Civil Aviation Administration of China. Ehang has also officially launched the regular trial operation of their eVTOL sightseeing routes along the river at Longhua Airport in Shanghai, which will help prepare them for full commercial operations in Shanghai. The vehicle carries up to two passengers and can fly short distances of about 18 miles, serving commercial tourism, logistics, passenger transportation, and emergency rescue. So far, the company has flown its autonomous EH-216S aircraft in 18 countries during testing, and they intend to sell the product globally. As we have mentioned in previous reporting, several piloted eVTOL companies are set to launch their services in Dubai this year. Low altitude air mobility will unlock new services and economies. What eVTOL application do you see being most impactful? Well, that wraps up today's episode. If you haven't yet, please sign up for our free email newsletter at MissGoElectric.com. Thank you for watching and have a great week. Until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go Electric.